Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm going to show you how you can set up a user authentication system using Fast API. So we're going to use a user auth simple basic user auth system. We're going to have the functionality of logging in and then uh, signing up also. And also we're going to use the hashed password for storing inside the database. So let's begin how we can do that. All right. So first of all, we have to install some requirements. So for the requirements, we can um, open up our terminal here. And here we can install some requirements. So for the requirements, we have um, something like first of all, we, have, we can obviously install the fast API. Apart from that, we can also install Uvicorn and SQL Alchemy, and then Passlib, Bcrypt, and also databases. So let's let me just show you how how it works. So first of all, I'm gonna enter inside my directory. First of all, I'll just activate my virtual environment. and now i can enter inside my directory and now i can install the requirements so first of all i can install fast api then uvicorn sql alchemy because i'm going to use an, S an sql database here so if you're using postgresql you can install psycho pg2 binary for that but here i'm using an sql library or an sql table so that's begin uh, apart from sql alchemy we can have fastlib bcrypt this is the library which will be used for hashing the password and after bcrypt we can also install databases for getting some easy database functions all right so after installing all of these libraries we can move forward to the next part so first of all what we're going to do is first of all we're going to make our database file so for that i have opened uh, db.py named file right here so i'm going to show you what all we're going to write in this so, so, all right so my requirements have been installed now we can move forward to the coding part all right so first of all i'm going to install uh, i'm going to import sql uh, cut i'm going to import sql alchemy's engine so for that you can import um create engine then you can also import something like uh let's just use create engine in the main file for now we can import the table column and integer for my integer fields string for my string fields all right so that's all and from the databases we can install some functions uh like metadata which is which is going to give us the data about the table itself all right so now i can define a table here so the users table is going to be the table we're going to use so that's going to be a table instance and the parameters are going to be first of all the name of the tables which can be users itself then you can have the metadata parameter and now i can start defining the columns all right so first of all i'm going to have the column of id here then we're going to have the column of username which is going to be a string and unique and nullable as well nullable is going to be false because uh it cannot be null actually because it is a unique username eventually and also we're going to allow the indexing because this is we're going to use to look up for uh, user entries frequently so we can enable indexing which will allow us to search through the user username column quickly then we can have a column for password and this is going to be just a string all right so this is going to be our database so let's just save this file and move on to the next file so the next file is going to be something like models.py Um, there's a small change actually this file belongs to the models.py itself because we have defined the model here so for the db.py now i'm going to show you what uh basically we have to configure our database inside this so for this first of all you can import the sql engine here so in for importing sql engine you can uh import create engine for from sql alchemy and then uh, you can also import metadata here all right for the metadata we can move forward for importing database from database library I can import a database from here so we can later refer to this all right and now i can basically start configuring my database so for this first of all i'm going to define my database url or uri if you're using an online database you can have the connection string from there itself but i'm going to use a local database here so i'm just going to define it uh, like an sql 
SQLite database here. So this is going to be named as users actually. And then we can move forward by defining the database instance. So that's going to be database equals to database of database URL. Then I'm going to have the engine, which is going to be, first of all, we can also define the metadata and we can have the engine here itself. So for the engine, we can remove these extra arguments. It's okay. We can just have an engine of the database URL instance. That's it. So this is our database.py file. And now we can move on to the next part. So now we can define the schemas for our file. So the schemas are going to be basically the pydantic models, which we're going to use as inputs for our endpoints. So we can make them in a separate file named as schemas.py. So I'm, from here, I'm going to install, uh, I'm going to import from pydantic import base model. All right. So just a second. All right, so importing base model, now we can build our schema. So first of all, I'm going to build a user create schema. And then uh, this is going to be an instance of base model itself. And it's going to have just two fields, which are username and password. So for creating the user name, uh, for the creating the user, we're going to use the user create uh, schema here. And for the user login, we're going to create another schema here just for the sake of segregation and uniform uh, heterogeneity we can use that for this case both of them are exactly same so we can eventually use the same in uh inside our main application but in some cases you might have different uh for both you might have different fields for both for example for the user create you might need uh you might also involve some other input categories like the email for the user or something like the phone number for the user but for the user login you might only need the username and password so we have defined the user login according to that so in this case both are same because we are just keeping it as a simple system for now all right so now we move on to the main file so for the main file i can name it something like app.py now we can start building our actual fast api all right so first of all obviously we're going to import the fast api so for for that you can use from fast api import fast api and then we can also import the extra tv exception for handling our exceptions now we're going to import the hashing function so that's going to be from parslib dot context import crypt context all right and from the database we're going to import something else now so i'm going to import database import database and metadata and engine all right so i'm going to import that using database comma so this is actually going to be our db.py file so that's that can be actually the db here and we're going to import the database engine and metadata from the models we're going to import the users and from schemas, we're gonna import the user create and user login schemas. All right, perfect. So now we can move forward. So first of all, I'm gonna define a fast API instance as app, and then I'm gonna create my engines, uh, create my tables. So for that, you can execute the function metadata dot create all engine that will create all the data for the tables inside our engine, which is connected to the database moving forward now we can have pwd context which is password context so this is just a crypt context instance which we used to hash our password moving forward now we can first of all have a startup event which is going to be app dot on event startup on the startup of our application what we can do is connect to our database so how we can do that is async define startup and then await database dot connect so this will await till the database is connected and then move forward with the other steps. Also, what we can do is on the shutdown of our fast API, we can disconnect from the database just to maintain uniformity. And so for that, you can use the function app dot dot on event. And for the shutdown uh, argument, we can use async define shutdown function, which will disconnect the database here. All right, so now we can finally start building our endpoints here. So first of all, what we're gonna do is at the rate app dot post so this is going to be a post endpoint and we're going to have the slash register url right here 
So for this, I'm going to define async defined register, and this is going to have the argument as the pydantic model of user create because this is eventually going to create the user. And for the query here, we have users dot insert value, which is going to be the username and the hashed password. So I'm just going to write it again for you. So we can have the query which we're going to execute. This is going to be users dot so first of all what i'm going to do is i'm going to check if any users exist or not if they do then i'm going to give an error or something like that so first of all i'm going to do users dot select and then dot where and now i'm going to put the condition which is going to be users dot c dot username equals to user dot username so if that exists now existing user is going to be database dot fetch when query which is going to be execute the query inside a database and then if the existing user exists then we can give him an exception that the username already exists something like this which is going to be an http exception here this is going to raise an status code 400 and the details are going to be username already exist all right so let's move forward now if this condition surpasses that means the username does not already exist and now we shall focus on creating the user's username user inside our database so for that first of all we're going to have the hashed password here which is going to be pwd context instance and the hash function for that so that's going to be pwd context dot hash and then user dot password so we're going to hash the password here and then we can execute our query which is going to be users dot inserts dot values and the username is going to be user dot username and the password is going to be hashed password all right and now i'm going to await for the database to execute this query here and then i can just simply return a message something like user registered successfully all right perfect so this is our whole register endpoint and now we can move forward to building our login endpoint so for the login endpoint we have here and i'm going to define the async and define login and for this i'm going to have the pydantic model as user login these are technically the same for me right now but might be different for you when you build a real world application or when you build a complex application with a user having multiple attributes all right so moving forward now we can define our function so first of all i'm going to define the query which is going to be users dot select dot user where the username is equal to equals to user and i'm going to check if the user exists or not for so for that i'm going to exist this query inside my database and for now if the user does not exist then i think we should get an error that you invalid username so i'm going to post an error here which is going to be invalid username or password just to maintain ambiguity in amongst the users which will eventually increase the security now moving forward um if now the next step is we can verify the password of a user so for that what we can do is if we got the user here then what we're going to do is if not pwd password pwd context dot verify this function actually verifies the hashed password and these two values are actually verifying itself uh, verifying themselves using the function so if they are not verified that means this is a wrong password so i'm gonna raise an error here, raise an error here which is invalid username or password again and after that if we are successfully uh, passing through both of these if conditions that means the username and password both of them were correct so now i can return a successful message here which is something like return message login successful all right perfect so we have developed our whole system here and now i think we can run our fast api and see how it works in real life so first i'm going to run the app using uvcorn app semicolon app and hyphen hyphen reload flag all right so it has started up completely so let's now visit the local host 8000 port here so i'm gonna visit the port here and all right so i have api right here so i'm gonna access this using my swagger ui for fast api and so I've, I, as you can see we have got two endpoints here just run login so first of all we're gonna test the register endpoint if it's working or not so i'm gonna click on try it out here so the username is going to be something like admin and the password is going to be something like pass or i can just get, uh, get it like abc123 and now i can execute this query all right so as you can see we have got the response as the code 200 which means it was successful and also we've got the message as user registered successfully 
perfect so now we can test it out if a user exists or not so we can go to the lo login endpoint here and click on try it out so for so first of all i'm going to test it out if something else uh, something wrong works or not so i'm going to test it out something like abc12 so this is not our original password so this should return or something like invalid username or password right here perfect and for the username i can change something like this user and this should also return us an invalid username or password perfect so now i'm going to pass in the correct credentials here and it should give us a success message right now all right so as you can see we have got a response code 200 which says message as login successful we have successfully implemented a login and logout user authentication system so that's it for the video guys and thanks for watching